This idea that's reinforced that some people are meant to look after and serve others. For example, if you're a mom, your role is to serve at home and to yield to the interests of all the members of that household by way of cooking and cleaning and doing all the prep work and looking after the kids and that's all you're there for. And this inequity in roles tends to facilitate this people-pleasing dynamic instead of saying, what does it look like for me to also advocate for myself and pursue what I feel I need? Of course, there are some tra trauma responses. There's the four Fs in trauma, of course, that some of you may know. There's fight, there's flight, there's freeze, and then there's this one that is very evident amongst people pleasers and that is fawning. Fawning where you try to gain the affection or the admiration of those that are uh, inducing trauma over you and this is like a survival technique and I know what that's like when you're like how do I appease this person who I've, I'm finding very traumatic in my experience interacting with them and so you fawn and you try to like appease and acquiesce and try to fulfill their needs in this people pleasing tendency that is known as fawning. And then there's even like a psychological um, uh, disorder that's called dependent personality disorder. And those with this one here find that they feel overly dependent for help and approval on, on others. So these are just a few cause or, uh, causes of being a people pleaser. Let me move on to some of the risks though that people pleasers um, are um, within the reach of.